to new rock stars. It's me, MT, and we just got a fresh new trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. This movie opens in just over a month, and I cannot wait to talk about all these new juicy details that you may have missed in this trailer. So let's jump on in, shall we? But first, of course, do not forget to hit up newrockstarsmerch.com where you can pick up a new shirt that is amazing. Our latest obsession shirts are the best, but we have a Black Panther Wakanda Forever one that uh, may or may not be still around. Go check that out. But let's get into that damn trailer, shall we? You're an interesting man, Scott Lang. You're an Avenger. You have a daughter. But you've lost a lot of time, like me. We open on a shot of San Francisco, the home of Scott Lang, the Pims, and the Van Dynes, as the MCU continues its West Coast narrative after MCU projects like the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, She-Hulk, and Shang-Chi. Like West Coast Avengers are coming, people. And a voiceover of Kang reveals to us that Scott feels a lot of regret over his lost time with Cassie while he was stuck in the quantum realm, something that Kang himself seems to be able to relate to, possibly implying that he wishes to escape the quantum realm to go conquer, you know, as a big person. <laughs> But as he's saying this, we see that Scott Lang and Hope Van Dyne have been invited to the Humanitarian Global Service Awards, likely for their contributions to the quantum realm science that the Avengers utilized to go back in time and save half the universe. I'd say that deserved a little bit of recognition, don't you? And this guy on the right of the frame holding the boom mic kind of gives me Stan Lee vibes. I don't, I don't know about you. Like, I'm not sure if this was intentional or not, but let's just say it was. We miss you, Papa Lee. R.I.P. Then we see Scott about to answer a call from his daughter Cassie in some type of library. But he does take a moment to answer the phone call in order to stare at a picture of the younger Cassie Lang that he left behind, played by actress Abby Ryder Fortson in the first two Ant-Man films. Implying to me that little Cassie might be a factor that Kang uses to manipulate Scott Lang. Because if you think about it, Scott did a time heist to save half the entire universe, but he couldn't save little Cassie. So I think that we could be seeing Kang the Conqueror dangling the possibility of stealing a little Cassie variant for Scott from another timeline, but only if Scott gets what Kang needs. Because that Star-Lord guy got a new Gamora, right? So the multiverse has an infinite amount of Scott's tots. Oh my god, that was a horrible episode of The Office. I just got flashbacks. What you gotta do to make a dream come true? And I can see why Scott might be missing little Cassie, because little Cassie didn't have a criminal record, much like is implied when we see teenage Cassie being released from a jail cell. But hey, you know, like father, like daughter, am I right? But much like Scott was in prison for trying to undo the fraud of his old employer, Vistacorp, I have a feeling that Cassie might have been arrested for doing a good thing like her dad. I mean, her layers of green and blue over a t-shirt of the planet Earth kind of make me feel like Cassie could be a bit of a teenage eco-warrior and might have been arrested trying to save the planet at a, at a protest gone wrong or something. I mean, the Atlantic Ocean is front and center here, so maybe the emergence of Namor and the Atlanteans during Wakanda Forever affected Cassie to fight against pollution and fight for the Atlantean people. And thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Do you know why we love a team up so much? Yes, it's the banter and the combos and the cool slow-mo group action shots, but mainly it's easier to take on the world when you've got help. Getting help is good. And now thanks to BetterHelp, getting help is easy too. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about what you need and what your preferences are for therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Once that's done, you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and you can schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. And if your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. BetterHelp lets you get the same professionalism and quality that you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom picked for you with more scheduling flexibility and at a more affordable price. To get 10% off your first month, you can scan the QR code, click the link in the description, or just go to betterhelp.com slash new rockstars. That's better H E L P dot com slash new rock stars for 10% off your first month of therapy. And thank BetterHelp again for sponsoring this video. But anyways, moving on, Cassie can be seen wearing the same shirt as she flicks her weird machine on, supposedly sending a signal to the quantum realm like she says in the last trailer. And as that blue glowing ball of light floats in the air, you can notice that there is a keyboard connected to the console, which is how I'm assuming Cassie has been able to chat with whoever she's been signaling in the quantum realm. She's chatting with strangers on the internet, a stranger that could quite possibly 
probably have been the big headed Modoc, who was revealed to be none other than Darren Cross in the MCU a little bit later in the trailer, who apparently survived after having his body crushed and shrunk into oblivion in the most gnarly and freaking horrific ways that I've ever seen in the MCU after kidnapping Cassie to get to Scott. So we could be looking at a similar situation here with Cross wanting to get revenge on the man who made him a big head machine man with little dangly legs. <laughs> This, of course, is not MODOK's origin in the comics, as MODOK is originally the scientist George Tarleton, who was mutated by AIM to become their mental organism only designed for computing complicated nerd shit. Until MODOK went crazy and became the mental organism only designed for killing instead of computing. So, you know, turn that C into a K and you, you're gonna be dead today. Ho ho ho! Just made that up. I got a big head like, like MODOK. But my big head gang brother Tommy Bechtold has an excellent explainer on just who MODOK is, so you should check that out if you haven't. But anyway, since we know that Darren Cross has been getting more and more crazier due to his exposure to his own shrinking radiation, having Cross substitute for Tarleton in the MCU doesn't make sense here. But I am very glad that they ended up giving him a mask with a more comic accurate face on it because seeing a big human face is very jarring and I don't think I can look at that for uh, two and a half hours if I'm honest with you. So it's quite disgusting. Everyone says that it looks like George Lopez in uh, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. I'm gonna have to agree with you. Not that it looks bad, it's just, you know, it's jarring. But moving on, we can also see that the room that they're in is filled with machines in what appears to be a luminescent ant farm to the right of the glowing ball, which can be seen better as everything gets sucked into the vortex. And it appears that Cassie was working to carry on the family business, but unfortunately, thanks to Kang, there's been some downsizing. But let's keep watching. Who are you? I'm the man who can give you the one thing you want, time. He can rewrite existence and shatter timelines. And we are finally down in the quantum realm and we get a great slow reveal of Kang with his blue face shield. His helmet and face shield seem to be similar to the suits worn by the time heisters in Avengers Endgame and the mask that the members of the Guardians of the Galaxy, not named Yondu, wear in space to survive. This makes me feel even more like Kang is a little bit of a Tony Stark wannabe, especially after knowing that He Who Remains had an Iron Man helmet in his office in some Loki concept art. And notice how his eyes turn blue when using his iconic blue mask it, making me suspect that the scars on his face could have been due to a surgery that he underwent to install this nanite technology into his very body. Technology that is linked to his nervous system and responds to his mental commands, which is again something that Tony Stark was very interested in doing with his Mark 42 armor in Iron Man 3. And we now see Kang appearing to speak directly to Scott Lang, telling him that I can give you what you want, time. And before we get this amazingly dope wide shot of Kang City that kind of feels like a mashing of famous Star Wars locations, Coruscant, and Lando Cloud City on the planet Bespin. I can totally see director Peyton Reed being inspired by those because he is no stranger to the Star Wars universe after directing one of the most memorable and amazing episodes of The Mandalorian ever by bringing Luke Skywalker back from the past to go kick some ass. We then get the shot of Kang's pyramid structure that we saw from an earlier trailer, which is for sure inspired by the character's love of ancient Egyptian culture in the comics, which of course causes Kang to go back in time to become the ancient Egyptian pharaoh Rama Tut, only to be chased away by the Fantastic Four in his first appearance. And Janet Van Dyne mentioning that Kang can rewrite existence and shatter timelines is of course the truth as we've seen it happen in Loki with he who remains at the Citadel at the end of time. But let's keep on rolling. You cannot trust him. I don't care who this guy is. I just lost so much. He can give us a second chance. And Scott Lang apparently has the ability to make clones of himself in this movie, like some sort of Paul Rudd Naruto hybrid man, which is a pretty cool skill to have, especially when it's gonna come in real use in this movie as he assembles a massive army of Ant-Man to rush towards this strange yellow glowing energy source and building a tower of Ant-Man clones to reach it, much like ants stack on top of each other in real life to make these weird Eiffel Tower formations to reach things and, and like help other ants get to different places and whatnot. It's actually pretty interesting and I, I like this imagery that they use. And as Kang and Darren Cross Modoc lead Scott and Cassie towards this cliff, you can see them emerge from a blue portal from what looks like Kang's base. A portal that looks suspiciously similar to the portals made by the Tesseract whenever beings like Thanos used it to instantaneously travel. I mean, since both Howard and Tony Stark were Tesseract scientists who used Tesseract power to power all their technology, and Kang seems to be a Tony Stark super fan for the future, I can definitely see 
Daisy Kang possibly using their research to learn how to unlock the ability to make portals that can go anywhere that he wants, as well as power the technology within his suit and the suits of his soldiers, and with a partner like MODOK, who was literally made in the comics to study the Cosmic Cube. I can see MODOK helping Kang master this Tesseract energy source portaling technology. And when Scott and Team Cassie hug, you can see these strange red crystals in the background, which sort of remind me of the red crystals that can be seen in Dormammu's realm of the Dark Dimension. I wonder if there's like some type of dark connection there. Let me make this easy for you. You will bring me what I need. Or everything you call a life. As the Pym family takes a much needed vacation ride together on the back of a flying quantum realm avatar creature, the creature's wings brush against the water, creating a beautiful blue glow. And while this could very well be the bioluminescence of some, you know, native plankton or whatever, I'm wondering if the land itself is brimming with blue cosmic energy, much like the land of Wakanda was after the vibranium meteorite hit and, you know, enriched the soil. I wonder if that's like magic water. That'd be really interesting. Then, as we see Scott forming this Eiffel Tower of Ant-Man to reach this glowing power source, we can see that it's surrounded by these rings with markings on them, similar to the markings found in one of the Quantumania logos. This being the case, I'm assuming that this is some type of quantum realm power generator, as it appears to function similarly to the shield power generator found on Asgard in Thor The Dark World. And much like the Dark Elves sought to destroy that generator, it seems like Scott may be seeking to do the same, because for a split second, you can see what looks like a blaster of some sort emerge from Scott Lang's wrist, implying that Scott wants to destroy this structure either for Kang or to stop Kang. Then we see Cassie standing in front of a yellow portal, possibly acting as a natural quantum tunnel back to the big people world, where all the bills are. <laughs> But the cracks around the edges make me feel like this could possibly be related to the cracks in the veil from Miss Marvel. And then Scott and Hope share the classic Clint and Natasha forehead touch. But the last time that happened, one of those two died. So uh, <laughs> it's not looking good for your boy Scott, especially as he uh, gets his ass beat thoroughly uh, by the end of the trailer. This is all my fault. You may not want her to watch this. We had a deal. You thought you could win. Then, as Kang is looking out into the horizon, it looks like he's watching one of his blue glowing ships being shot down by a green glowing ship, presumably Team Ant-Man. And as Kang's fleets of ships take off, I couldn't help but notice how the blue convex design of the ship's windows look similar to the rounded blue helmets of Kang's soldiers, possibly implying that both the ships and the soldiers are similarly designed pieces of technology, with his army being a robot army similar to, you know, Tony Stark's Ultron program, or the Ultron bots in the Illuminati headquarters. And if Avengers Kang Dynasty is on the way, as is implied by the trailer's use of the words a new dynasty, the Avengers are going to need an army of aliens, monsters, or robots to smash because Disney cannot have the Avengers slaughtering actual human beings. Not since that whole Scarlet Witch fiasco. And then Kang makes his assault on this red foresty area in the quantum realm that could possibly be this area from the first trailer, and could possibly be where those red crystals from earlier came from during that Lang family hug. But I have a feeling all that red could imply the presence of chaos energy being affected Factor, especially considering how Scott's clones unravel similarly to how Mantis and Mr. Fantastic unraveled due to the red energy users in both Avengers 3 and Doctor Strange 2. And if this is the case, I have a feeling that this army of Scott's could be a result of chaos energy probability magic, with Scott generating a clone that pops up whenever he needs to make a choice. So if, for instance, Scott has the options of going either left or right, a clone will pop up that allows him to do both at the same time. But anyways, before Scott is able to go through this yellow portal like Cassie was about to earlier in the trailer, it seems like Kang blasts him away and gives him that beatdown that we see at the end of the trailer, symbolically stomping on Scott like a man would stomp on an ant. Harkening back to what Nick Fury said to Loki in Avengers 1, Ant? Boot. But not before we see a glimpse of Cassie in her purple suit doing a dramatic hero jump and dangling off of an edge that reveals a futuristic cityscape of the quantum realm very similar to that of the Sovereign Race as Baby Groot nearly falls off the edge to his death. And we get another look at MODOK who has two laser cannons jutting out of the sides of his chair, kind of like Cross's yellow jacket armor had laser arms as well. I don't have to win. Ah! We both just have to lose. Sorry, Cassie. 
And as Kang and Scott fight, Scott says that his goal isn't beating Kang, it's making sure that Kang loses, which is a lesson that Scott probably learned from Doctor Strange after Doctor Strange used that mentality to best the MCU's first multiverse conqueror, the Dread Dormammu. And finally, before Kang shoots out Blue Blast to end the trailer, he floats on the ground on this blue energy disc, similar to the blue energy that Reed Richards portaled in with in Multiverse of Madness. And since Kang is supposedly a descendant of Nathaniel Richards in the comics, there could be some type of relationship there. But that is the breakdown for the Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania trailer. Are you guys excited for this movie? What was your favorite part of the trailer? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. You can follow me at Mastertainment on Twitter. Most importantly, you can follow New Rockstars wherever you are on the social medias. But again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.